In the previous two videos, we covered installing VirtualBox and a Linux VM in VirtualBox. I have some bad news though. There's not yet a stable version of VirtualBox for M1, M2, Macs. Like Gandalf the White showing up at Helm's Deep, there is a savior. Who is this savior? Well, I'm gonna show you. This is B from Tay Talk Tech, and today I'm gonna tell you all about this alternative and show you how to install Linux in a VM on Mac OS for M1, M2 processors. Stick with me. I have a favor to ask. If you like this type of video and wanna see more content like it, make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell button for notifications. Also, don't forget to give this video a like if you like it. Let me know what you liked, didn't like, or if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or emotional outbursts down in the comment section below. And lastly, make sure you stick around all the way to the end uh, of this video to make sure you get the most out of it. Let's do this thing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the desktop. Let me just get everything set up here. All right, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here we go. Now I will I will start off by saying VirtualBox does have a developer preview uh, currently available, but we I just don't want to mess with it. Like I just don't like those developer beta kind of stuff. I I'm not a tester and I don't like that. It's just I I don't like dealing with bugs and and things like that. Um. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and skip that. But once they have a stable version, that is something I can cover in more detail. So let me know down in the comment section below if that is something that you would you know like covered. Now getting to UTM. That's the name of the actual application. And that's the website that we're looking at here. Uh, UTM, it's pretty easy to use and you don't have to do a bunch of configuration. UTM is actually a free and open source hypervisor that runs on top of QEMU and QEMU also powers Linux, uh, some Linux virtualization. There's two versions of this app. The one that we have right here is going to be the downloadable app directly from their website. It's free, open source. Um, there's no fee to do it and you would install it like you would any other um, any other dis, uh, any other application. So let me actually show that to you here. Well, actually, look, I got it. Let me download it. I forgot I don't have it downloaded any longer. All right, so we've got it. Let's just give it just a second to go ahead and finish. And then we'll just go in here and we'll just double click that. And there we go. We take this, drag it over there. Bada bing, bada boom. Things can be much easier in Mac sometimes. So there we are. I've already got it installed, so I'm not going to go through that. The other way that you can actually install it is going to be through the App Store. Uh, and you can see here that we just searched for UTM and we got the virtual machine. Now this version is $9.99. Uh, so there, it is a paid amount, but keep in mind that 999 goes directly to supporting this project. And I really love this project because it does a fantastic job. It's easy to use, lightweight and all that good stuff. Uh, it, the, as far as performance go, performance is much better than on VirtualBox. Not that VirtualBox is bad. Uh, VirtualBox does have a lot of features and stuff like that. So it's really, you know, what what are you really looking to get out of, you know, like the, the application that you're using. So just keep that in mind. Now, um, all right, so... Installing installing a VM is going to be super is going to be super easy in uh, in UTM. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go and download an install file. Now I'm going to be using Ubuntu Server 22.04 for this um, for this demonstration, but really any Linux distribution is gonna do. And I'm using this because it's well supported and if you're on a new snag, it should be easy to find a solution. Uh, by default, it does not come with a desktop environment, but I'm gonna show you how to install one just in case you wanna add it. I do highly encourage you to do it without the desktop environment because that's how you're gonna get better. You're gonna get so much more comfortable running from the command line if you don't really have any options. But now, keep in mind, if you do wanna go down the road where you want that GUI, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It is, it is still totally fine to do that. And um, yeah, that, that is something that can be done. So don't be like, don't feel like you're a lesser Linux user just because you need a GUI or you want a GUI there. Cause I, you know, I usually like to have a GUI in a lot of my systems. Um, you know, my home server doesn't have one, but you know, other ones like desktop ones and stuff like that for sure, you know, um, and things like that. So, um, but moving on here now, you want to make sure though, that you're downloading any ISO, uh, ISO or install file, which is the ISO. You want to make sure that you're downloading the ARM version. Because ARM is different than x86, which is the typical um, x86 64 bit is the more standard um, CPU architecture that's out there available. So make sure you're getting the ARM version. And then we're just like in this particular case, we're going to download this one right here. I've already got it downloaded, so I don't need to download it again. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over here to UTM. Now this it's pretty it's a pretty simple thing. So let's go ahead and just hit uh, let's go ahead and hit uh, what does it say? Create a new virtual machine. Then we're going to go ahead in here and select virtualize. And then we're going to come down here and go to Linux. And then here, we're going to go down here to boot. I'm sorry, uh, to the boot ISO image. I'm going to come in here. We're going to go over here. We're going to select our boot image. I got mine in my downloads folder, but just navigate to whatever folder you have it in. 
We're going to go ahead and hit continue. Uh, depending on whether you're using the GUI uh, or not, for non-GUIs, I'd recommend um, you'd only need about 2,048 uh, megabytes of RAM, which is two gigabytes. Uh, or if you're using the GUI, I'd recommend a minimum of four gigabytes. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it here. Uh, actually, no, no, no. I'm going to go ahead and because we're doing a demonstration, here, I'm going to do eight. 8192 which is eight gigabytes just to make things a bit faster as we're going through there and then we can just go ahead and leave it at the default i believe it's two cores uh, that it uses but you could go if you're using it without the gui you can you can go all the way down to one but if you're using it with um with the gui i'd recommend at least a minimum of two uh, we'll be able to check that at the end i believe it's the default is two though and then as far as storage goes the honestly i think the minimum that you can do is like eight gigabytes but i'm just going to go ahead and do 25. Uh, is a nice round number. So you could do that or you could leave it at the default 64. It's really up to you. Just make sure you don't go below like eight. It, it, it may tell you if you like you, you may run into issues if you don't, if you go like as low as eight, but I, it's just been a while. So uh, let's go ahead and move on here. Uh, this is right here. If you want to share a directory, you can do that. I'm not getting into that. And then here's the summary. Yeah, and it doesn't list how many cores here. We'll check that once we get into the actual virtual machine, but here it's just going to confirm all the details. Uh, of everything. Yeah, so we are good uh, to go here. Let's go ahead and call it something different than Linux. Let's just call it Ubuntu test. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to come down here where it's, uh, it says CD DVD. We're going to remove that to clear because we want to go ahead and remove that. That's oh, actually, no, no, I'm sorry. You want to leave that there. My apologies. We'll do that after we do the install. My apologies. Please. I... All right, let's go ahead and hit start. It's going to go ahead and blow itself up here. All right, on the screen, just go ahead and hit enter. Give it just a minute to go ahead and boot up. This does take a, a minute the first time around. All right, let me just go ahead and get that here. All right, we're here inside of our installer. English is gonna be what I'm gonna select, so select your language. Then go ahead and here, just select your keyboard. If it's anything different, you'll just use tab to go up to the other things. We're going to hit done here. We're going to select, just leave it selected as Ubuntu server here. Make note of this IP address because you're going to want to, if you if you want to SSH into this system, you'll want to go ahead and make sure that you have that. We don't need a proxy address. We're good with a default mirror. Uh, use entire disk is fine here. Just tab down to done. And then this will confirm it. We can go ahead and just hit enter and then continue and then your name just put your name in there put name the server and then we're going to call we're going to go ahead and give it a username all right and here we don't need to worry about doing ubuntu pro i go ahead here and hit spacebar to install open sh server that's going to allow you to in the um to ssh into this server and hit done it's not required by the way you don't if you want to just access it through the through uh, utm you can do that as well i usually just do it through there because it's so much easier to manage that way because you can it's well we don't need any of these so hit tab and then done and then cool it's going to come here and it's going to do the install so i'm going to go ahead and pause the video while it does its install and then i'll be back once it is done All right, and it has finished. So just go ahead and hit tab to get down to reboot now a couple times. All right, and we're going to go ahead and let it reboot. But you don't you can go ahead and keep using it. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and SSH into it. But what we need to do first is this is going to go back to what I said is we're going to actually let's go ahead and close out of this. I'm, and then we're going to come down here. We're going to go ahead and clear it to go ahead and remove that. And then we'll hit the play button again. And give it just a second here to go ahead and start booting. Perfect. We got it there. I'm going to SSH into it just because it's a little bit easier for you guys to see that way. I could update the, the font size in the in the in the console, but I don't feel like doing that right now. So we're just gonna go ahead and do this. All right, perfect. And then I'm gonna clear that out. All right, let me just, I'm gonna make it just a smidge bigger. Okay. 
there we go. All righty then. So let's go ahead and install a few other things. The first thing we need to do is do a sudo apt update, and then we're going to do uh, ampersand, ampersand, and then we're going to do upgrade. And what this is going to do is it's going to go ahead and check for all available updates, and then it's going to go ahead and automatically install them. Wait, why didn't it? Oh, I spelled, I spelled up. Wait, what? What? Oh, I forgot to do sudo apt upgrade. I'm sorry. If you want to do that effectively, you got to do and, um, and sudo apt upgrade. So that is my bad. All right, let's give it just a second here to go ahead and let it do its thing. It shouldn't take too long for this to happen. All right, we put that tack Y on there to go ahead and just accept all of the all of the updates. Get it almost done there. 99%. We just got to make sure we get everything up to date before we install any of the other packages that we're going to need because we're going to need to install two of them. Let's see, here we go. We're good here. Just tab down to OK and hit Enter. Perfect. We are done. We are good here. Let's clear this out. All right. Now we have to install two things. We're going to do a sudo. Whoops. Let's get that out of the way. sudo apt install. We're going to do a QEMU uh, guest agent. We're going to do the spice a uh, vd vd agent all right and there we go the qemu guest agent is for some uh like some like more advanced uh like features can be unlocked that way um the spice agent is going to allow us to do uh, clipboard sharing as well as dynamic display resolution so we want to make sure those are installed let's go ahead and do that we'll accept yes let it do its thing Shouldn't take too long for these either. It's going, 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 it's going. It's going. There we go. And we're going to come just tab here to OK. All right, and then we are good to go. Let's go ahead and clear this out. All right, now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and install the desktop environment. You can use any desktop environment you want. I'm going to use the Ubuntu desktop for this demo. All right, we're going to put yes, and this is going to take a few minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and put the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I'll come back once it has finished. All right, and here we go. It has finished. Let's go ahead and come over here. We're going to just tab down, hit OK, and then we're going to do a sudo apt reboot. Wait, whoop, sudo, not sudo apt, just sudo reboot. Sorry, guys, I am tired today. Uh, let's do a reboot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, back over here. And we'll wait for it to boot up. Give it just a second here. And the cool thing is, is like, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but like when I run Ubuntu server with, you know, the Ubuntu desktop, it feels so much more responsive than doing it on the desktop version. So I, it's, and it probably is a little bit lighter. I'd have to actually like compare them side by side, but we are in guys. Yes. Perfect. There we go. We got everything set up. Now, um, one thing I will tell you is uh, for the commands that we just went over for uh, at least for um, the QEMU agent and the uh, Spice agent, those will work as well on um, on any Fedora or Red Hat Enterprise Linux servers. Uh, our distributions, just make sure that if you do use it on there, you're using DNF versus apt. I just wanted to make sure I let you guys know that. So it's so cool. There are free ways to get into Linux on any OS. Check out the other videos in my Get Into Linux series. If you're caught up, check out this other video instead. Remember, mistakes make you better, so keep on making them. Thank you so much for watching my video and have the greatest of days.